Hey everybody, so this is going to be the last part of the FL20 mixing walkthrough, I think I called it. So, there's two other parts, I'll have them both linked in the description, and there's also going to be a little card, fuck that up, there's also going to be a little card popping up for both of them right after each other, so make sure to check those out. This video is going to be all about the final touches I like to do before I send out a beat or before I render it out. So, I'm going to try to keep this one pretty quick, last one was pretty long, so... We're aiming for at least 10, hopefully under 15, but let me show you. So right now we have everything panned, uh, stereoed, monoed, leveled, all that shit, EQ'd. So I'm just going to show you what I like to do. It just sounds at the very end. Some of them I don't do a lot of stuff to. Some of them is just for style purposes. Like the silly texture here, this one's all about style purposes. So I'll show you what I do with that. And then the other stuff is just little things that I like to do. And then we'll go through the mastering process, which is for me very simple. As you can see, I only have four uh, plugins here, but let me show you. So let's go back to our section here. Actually, I'll show you what I did with the Selly first. So what I like to do before I do the other sounds in the mix that aren't like special, I'll do the stuff that's special to me first, or like a special sound. So for that, that is, or sorry for this, that is, and then without any of the plugins, that sounds like very sharp. So first thing I did was take out the EQs, or not the EQs, <laughs> I'm fucking dumb. I took out the highs a little bit, I took out the lows, and then some of the very sharp sounds, same thing as the EQing, I just took them out, dipped them out a little bit, and then Blood Overdrive, mm, I'm really, <laughs> really fucking bad today, Blood Overdrive, that is going to preamp it, and what preamp does, it'll boost the input before it gets to like the fader track kind of thing. So like, at least, that's, I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Preamp should be, you're boosting the input. So here I'll show you. So, boost up the preamp a little bit, a little bit louder, and then I do times 100, a lot louder. So Blood Overdrive, pretty good to use. I like to use this a lot more for like hard beats or like very distorted like beats because you can really boost the sound that way. And after that, I added this love filter, just a band pass, and then Rough Rider, which that's what it sounded like before, kind of controls it. Rough Rider, all it really does is it'll take the waveform and like it's kind of like a compressor in a way where like it'll boost or lower sound to get it to be kind of the same. But the thing with this is that it's not really compressing that much with the Rough Rider. It's more or less trying just to make up the gain. So that's what I did here. But instead of trying to make it up, I just kind of really lowered it. So it's more like squished. So it sounds more like a, uh, kind of like a bit crush, if you know what that means. It's like kind of like a distorted and compressed sound. So I used the Rough Rider. It sounds a lot better. And then of course with the beat, it sounds like this. So good little sound that I thought was pretty good for this beat. Now let me show you what I like to do with all of the other sounds for the very end. So let me go to the melody first. So reverb, fast distort, and then compressor. So for the reverb, what I usually like to do is to send this out to another bus pretty much, like a, a reverb bus, or you send it out to a different track, and the way you do that is select the track that you want to send or route, 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 however you say that, to the next track, right click the track right here, this bottom part, this little arrow, and then route through this track, and while that, mm, I really can't talk today, <laughs> what that'll do is pretty much copy the sound right there, and then if you do route to this track only, then all the sound will be to that track only. So you can mute this, the sound will be gone, and then you can mute that track and the sound's gone. So this would become like, if you route to this track, think of it this way. You'd have 1 right here and 20 playing the same, but they both get routed out to the master. And then if you route to this track only, 1 sending stuff out to 20, like a uh, output, and then 20 is routed to master. So instead of having two different tracks being sent to 1, when you route to this track only, It'll take this one, route it to that one, without routing it to the master, and then the 20 would be sent to the master. 
simplest way to put it, route to this track would double your sound. Route to this track only would send that sound to a different mixer without reassigning it. Maybe the best way to put it. So what I usually like to do is route that track to a new one and put the reverb on that because then you can EQ it and you could mess with it a lot better with this with this beat mix. I kept it on because it kind of comes in and out and it wasn't that big of a deal. So reverb, how I like to do it is you don't want to reverb the lows because then it gets really muddy. So I do low cuts usually above 200, but you can mess around with it. And then the high cuts for this one, for this beat, I really can't talk. <laughs> Holy shit. For this beat, I took out a lot of the highs. So it was more of like a, uh, a mid boost in the reverb. And the size will kind of affect how echoey it is. And then you have your wet, your dry. Usually if you send the the track to a new one with the reverb on it, you want to be 100% wet on the reverb in that one because you have the dry and you have the wet separate. For this one, or for like if you're only putting a reverb on one, then you'll have to kind of mess with the dry and the wet because you have that dry and the wet output coming from the same track instead of coming from two, so it's a lot harder. And then decay a little bit of a decay. I guess a little bit of a decay. Decay is just like how long it lasts after. And then I separate it a little bit. And then if you want your reverb to be um, in time, I keep it either at zero depending on the beat. Or if you want it to be a fourth quarter note or like a quarter note, then you do 60,000 divided by whatever BPM you're in. And that'll give you a quarter note. There's other like mathematical equations for like eighth note and shit like that. But quarter note... 60,000 divided by your BPM. That simple. And then high dampening right here, or damping, that kind of tells you, that kind of tells you, it kind of messes with the, what's it called? How the high sounds. So like, in the reverbs, you can kind of hear the highs a little bit better when you mess with the damp. So mess with the damp a bit, depending on how you want your reverb to sound. And then fastest sort, what I like to do with this, is I like to do this very subtly, so... You can kind of hear it brighten it up a little bit. I like to use the distort for like brightening stuff up, kind of like saturation does. And the way I do that is I'll take, and I usually go to the heat preset. And then I'll make sure that the mix goes not all the way up, because you don't want it to be just like straight, because... kind of hear it it kind of really squashes it so i make sure the mix isn't all the way up and this is all by ear and i put the threshold down that means that when the threshold's down see how the 100 is really like distorted bring it down it's not as bad and it's for distorting i like to either brighten it or really just like fuck it up with the source and that's how i like to use it then we have our eq and then our compressor, this is kind of the thing that takes a long time to learn. So I'm going to give you a very quick crash course in it. Bear with me <laughs> a little bit because it's it's kind of hard to describe without people getting confused. So let me go with threshold. I'll go like this. I'll go from top down. So your threshold is what the compressor sees as the start of its effect. So if you're at, like I am, negative 24.6, that means that the compressor will start working at 24.6, negative 24.6 dB. So threshold is when you want your compressor to start compressing, pretty much. Your ratio is pretty much how much you want your compressor to compress. So a 2-1, for every 2 decibels, you'll get 1 of reduction. So... With this, like right here, say you had 10 dB, right? Divided by 2, that means that for the 10 dB at 2, 1 ratio, 5 would be reducted. And, or not reducted, like compressed. So that's what ratio means. So the higher the ratio is, the more it's going to compress. The lower it is, the less it'll compress. So like a 1.5 to 1, pretty light. 2 is pretty light. And then pretty much from there three is pretty much three up 
is kind of really getting compressed, and like 10 to 1 is like a limiter almost. So ratio is one of the big things too. Gain, that's just the gain after. I don't know if you heard that. But the gain is how much is after the output. Like volume and gain are different and the same at the same time. Some presets or plugins, I mean, have gain work as a volume knob. And some have gain work as a gain knob. Gain is pretty much boosting the input of a sound. While volume is boosting the output of a sound. So I'm pretty sure for Fruity Compressor, all it does is it boosts the output. I'm not too sure though, of a sound. So like with gain staging, however much you take away from a sound after you compress it, you want to gain back into it so it stays the same in the mix. And then your attack. Your attack is how fast you want your compressor to start working. So threshold's where you want it to start, like from there up. Attack is how fast you want the envelope of the compressor or like pretty much the shape of the compressor to start working. So an attack of 25 is pretty, you know, pretty short. Your attack is really good to affect how your compressor sounds, too quick of an attack, and then you'll have everything compressed, too slow of an attack, and nothing will be compressed. Your release is the opposite of the attack, it's how fast you want it to release or stop compressing. So too slow of a release, so like a higher number, means that the compressor will always be working, and then too quick of a release, a lower number, would be like a pumping sound to it, which you don't want. You don't want a pumpy sound because then it'll, it just sounds weird to the ears. Unless you're going for that sound, I don't know why you would. But if you could ever find a reason to do that, you don't want it to sound like it's pumping. And then the type for this is pretty much different ways to affect the compressor. So you can go like hard, I think vintage, medium, vintage, soft, and then hard. <laughs> hard R, medium R, vintage R, soft R. I'm such a fucking child, dude. But I chose soft because I didn't want it to be too rough. And you can mess around with those as well. So let me show you really quick how all this works out. See how it's kind of more flat now? And it kind of opens up with a more tacky bit. Another release. See, there's like no compression happening. always compress and then change the ratio here see how that really kind of squashes it when you get higher up remember that that means 10 decibels one bring it back down opens up now the way that I like to do my compression is I like to start with a threshold pretty low in my attack at zero, I listen to only the sound that I want to compress. And then what I like to do is very slowly bring up my attack. And the way you can do that is if you hold control while you push your mouse up. So left click the knob, hit control up. If you don't do that, it's a lot faster. I really can't control it as well. So control up, just listen until it opens up. Here I'll show you. You listen until it opens up. I'm just really good at exaggerate it. So it kind of sounds open right there. I'm going to back it off a little bit. Then I'm going to boost the threshold. So it sounds full. Now just look. I was looking at the volume right now to see how much gain I need to add back to it. So it's hitting about 15 before. I'm just going to boost to at 15 again. So now you get your compression with your volume back. And then if you feel like it sounds a bit weird or a bit off, maybe it's being compressed too fast because you, different BPMs is going to affect how your compressor works, you can play with the release. So I can get away with that. I'll put it right there. So that's how I like to do compression. If you want a different tutorial on compression, I'll really look into it. Like I'll research compression a lot more to really give you the nitty gritty 
and help you out with it. But easiest way to remember compression is that threshold is where you want your compressor to start. Ratio is how much you want your compressor to compress. Remember, two to one. Gain is going to be how much you want the compressor to, depending on your plug-in, it might boost it before, it might boost it after. The gain or the volume is how much you want the volume to go back up. Usually you want to do it back to what the original dB level was before you compressed. Your attack is how you want your compressor to, or how fast you want it to hit. So that would be pretty much like your attack would be like the envelope, how fast you want it to attack. So the attack is kind of like a delay. It's like how much do you want to delay the compressor from starting? And remember that a higher attack would be a, it'd be a lot harder for the compressor to start. Not really harder, it'd take a lot longer. So you'd want to use that, say if you have a kick that you want to compress without losing the transient, you would make sure the attack is long enough so the transient comes through and the tail would be compressed. And that can really make a kick sound really hard. But say you want something to, like the whole melody, say it's like it's way too sharp, the transients are way too loud, that's when you want to kind of do like a quicker attack so they can really attack those transients. And then release would be how long you want the compressor to work for. So say if you're using like a hi-hat you want to compress, and so let's say it's hitting on like every two, or like it's a two-step kind of hi-hat, then what you want to do is probably a shorter release so that it's not just compressing the whole time. But then say you have like a melody that's like a piano and the chords are very drawn out, you can probably get away with a higher release because then it's, you're compressing more of the sound. And remember you get that pumpkin sound if you kind of mess it up a bit. And the type is how you want the compressor to work. So with Fruity Compressor, which is a default plugin, it kind of works by like how you want the compressor to hit in a sense. I don't know if I'm really describing that too well. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them the best I can. And now I'm just going to show you some other stuff. Now, like I said, I like to keep the distortion pretty much just to brighten it or to really fuck up a sound. So, use the kick without distortion. See, that way I use distortion to really make it hit harder and kind of fuck it up. Same thing with the clap. Here it is with distortion. Brighten up, kind of fuck it up a bit. Sally. So that's pretty much how I like to do for this beat. It was very simple. I kept it very simple. That's how I like to do the individual sounds. You know, I'll kind of mess with distortion a bit, see if I can brighten it up. I like to mess with compressors to make it sound a bit more tight. What compressors do is they make your lowest point and your highest point in your volume closer together. That way you don't have something that's like really jumping all around your mix because then it's going to be hard for listeners to listen to it if they have to keep adjusting their volume because something is kind of jumping up and down in the volume. So compressors are what you do to get your lowest level of volume closer to your highest level of volume. And of course, you know, a transient would be the higher level and then something like a, like an ambient kind of noise would be lower levels usually. So it's kind of, you're squashing those together, but you're trying not to lose their hit, their impact while you compress. And I'll show you really quickly what I like to do to my master. So these bottom two plugins are just to make it louder. And the top two, sometimes you put like, you might put a saturation plugin, I put a distortion plugin on the master. But the master track obviously affects every single thing that's routed to it. So as you can see here, this is routed to the master. Every single one's routed to the master unless you route it somewhere else. So say the PXP music tag was actually routed to here, to this track only. Now it's now this track is routed out to 21, and 21 is routed out to master. So that's what that would do. I'm gonna put that back. I'm like, I have so many ideas in my head that I can't get out. That's why I keep like stumbling with my words pretty much. So sorry about that. I'm just trying to get a lot of information out. It's kind of hard for me to describe some of it because you learn a lot of this through experience, if we're being honest, which is very frustrating, but keep going at it and you'll get better at this stuff. I promise. So for this beat, what I like to, sorry, for this beat, what I like to do, fuck that up again.
for this beat, what I did, there we go, was I used the FL EQ2, Fruity Parametric EQ2. I used the 20 hertz and 18 kilohertz cut because the human ear doesn't hear below 20 and doesn't hear above 18, and it'll clean up your mix a little bit. So here it is without that EQ. A lot cleaner, see? It's a lot cleaner sounding, which really helps a lot. This is something that I like to do like first because how the mixing works is whatever's on top is first and it goes down after that. So say you have like an EQ up here and you have a reverb, the EQ will work first before the reverb. So keep that in mind. How your chain works matters a lot. So say you have a, some kind of like style plugin up here. Say you have like a band pass. That band pass is gonna affect the rest of your plugins. So keep that in mind. But I'll do that first so that everything else after that is being affected by this EQ. And then right here, same thing as in the EQ episode, I just took away some of the sharp sounds or stuff that sounded very off to my ears. I took out with this EQ. And then I used the Fruity Multiband Compressor, not to compress, that's why everything is bypassed, just to boost the gain or the volume. Because this is what it does. This also boosts the volume or the gain. You know, it's gain and volume are one of those things that are very, people can mess them up or like mix them up together. But here I'll show you. So if you right click, so you can see the presets, go to Mastering 6dB. What this does is it'll put a limiter on your beat and then it'll also have six decibels of gain already applied. So what I like to do for beats is I'll take off the limiter. If you're only using this to boost your um, mix of sound, then you want to make sure the limiter is on. If you're using a soft clipper after it, you want to make sure the limiter is off. The limiter is going to limit it at 0 dB. I think about that for a second. And that's what you kind of, you don't want it to clip. Anything over zero dB is going to clip. So I'll put this on. And what I like to do is put the soft clipper on after it. The threshold goes all the way up. And if you don't want your beat to clip, you want this to look like that. Or just middle mouse button the post gain knob and you'll be good. The reason you want your threshold to be up like that is because like this is rounding off the transients and the sounds before. Like this, it's just going straight into it. For this beat, I want it to clip a little bit. So I just put the post gain up by a little bit. And then what I did was I take the gain and I turn it up until it sounds loud enough without losing the punch from the kicks, snares, all that. So that sounds pretty good. Quick little before and after. And then after. So that's how I like to do my mastering. I'm going to show you very quickly how I like to export. And that'll be it. That'll be the whole series. I hope you guys really like this series. I enjoyed working on it. But let me show you very quickly how I like to do my sending out. So for MP3 and Wave, you want to keep all your plugins on. And then you'll just name this however you want it to be. So I'll name this one Ops. 24 bit is what you want to send out to. And the reason you want to do that is because 24 bit can be compressed down to 16 for like the final render that goes on to Spotify, but you can't make 16 go up to 24. Mix your tracks together. And then it'll be the whole song for this. We have that little section. So it's going to I'm gonna that out, but you want to do the whole song and then cut remainder, and then you render that out. And for MP3, 320. And then make sure all these are the same. Then render out. And then for stems, which are just the way files of your individual sounds, you wanna turn off your Turn off your plugins and make your beat sound louder. 
if your stems are clipping, keep your clipper on. Soft clipper. Go out to export wave. Name that what you want. You should put them to a folder so it's not like 20 different sound files all over your desktop. Split the mixer tracks. And then render that out. And that'll render out every single one of your mixer tracks as its own wave file. And then you could put that into a RAR file or a zip file, anything like that. And then what I like to do is I'll also keep a FLP, or like a uh, DAW file, because I have to go back into it. The easiest way to do that would be to export, go to zip to loop package. That'll give you every single sound that you use in the beat. It'll give you uh, a save of it as well, like an FLP save. It's a lot easier than keeping just the FLP, because then you might not have the sounds in the future. Let's say if you accidentally delete the pack, so zip to the package would be the best way to do that if you want to keep it for the future. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys like this series. I really hope that you learned some stuff out of it. And of course, leave a comment about some stuff that you learned. If you need any more help with stuff like compression, like I said, compression is very, it takes a long time to get used to. And it's very hard to describe. It's just kind of one of those things that clicks after a bit. I mean, it took me like three years to figure out how to even basically use compression. So don't be discouraged if you don't understand it. Just keep on reading into it, keep on looking into it, and I'm sure you'll eventually get it. But like I said, hope you liked the video, hope you liked the whole series, and I hope that you liked the Ops beat by me and PXB. Of course, Ops is linked in the description, and the first two parts of the series are linked in the description, as well as in the playlist on my channel. Hopefully you guys liked the video and the series. Thanks for watching. See y'all in the next one.